Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Babby, and you are currently watching Babby's Guide for Endless Legend. Today we are going to talk about an integral part of Endless Legend. This is one of the major ways to accomplish victory and expand your empire. Now this is not the only way to expand of course, but it is a or an option you might consider depending on your focus and your faction. Now, we do not know exactly what we can do with diplomacy, uh, but to find out, we will go to the diplomacy, diplomatic overview. And we do that by going to the nav bar, all the way at the left top here. We see the two shaking hands. It kind of symbolizes the agreement between two people, <laughs> one assumes. Click on that, and we will see the diplomatic overview. Now. This diplomatic overview will show the stances of different empires um, and their, their affection to your empire, their stances towards you. You can also change the view and see what other empires think of a particular empire. For instance, this empire here. If we want to know uh, what other people think about him, we hover over the character We go to the two arrows here, um, if you saw that right there, it didn't respond very well, to be honest. Um, it's quite annoying when a character is all the way over here. Um, but we can switch the view here, and here we see the point of view of the other empire. Now we cannot actually see the point of view of this empire, uh, because it, it hasn't encountered other empires yet that it is not at call to war with. Over here we see this empire is at peace with us, the Draken. Now if we want to go back to the view of our empire, we see that there's a lot of stances here. First off, we have the alliance stance. Alliance uh, between two empires secures, well, protection uh, with one another. It also gives you certain victory points towards a diplomatic victory. If we hover over uh, the tooltip here, we will see exactly the breakdown. For a period of 10 turns, uh, you will get influence points depending on whatever. You can read this yourself, uh, but it is a viable option for a victory. Now the next stance is peace, and this obviously means that you are at peace. And there is a possibility between two empires to engage in trade. This will happen automatically and there will be an exchange between dust and technology. If we hover over the uh, icon here, we can see a breakdown uh, in the tooltip. If we go to the next stance, we will see Cold War, which is kind of a, well exactly what it says, a Cold War. Uh, you can fight indirectly with skirmishes. Two armies can find one another on the battlefield, but you cannot full out attack uh, another city and raise it to the ground. If we hover over here, we can once again see the breakdown of what a called war does. And last, of course, last but not least, is the war stance. Uh, currently, I am not at war with anyone, so I can't really show you. But this is kind of self-explanatory. You are at war with a nation and everything is allowed. Now, depending on your stances, um, there are options available to your empire. For example, um, I can't open engage in trade with someone I'm at called war with. If I uh, open the diplomacy screen here, we see that our options are quite limited. We have two unique options here, and those are complement and warning. There is a, a certain thing we can do with these. If I were to give this empire a complement, this will decrease the costs of engaging in diplomacy with these peoples. Now, if, if you, you might already have noticed, but right here we see costs uh, shown next to every single option here. Over here it says no price modifier. 
Uh, these 19 stars are actually the influence within your empire. These are the Fidzi that you collect over time from each city and each citizen working on influence there. Again, if we hover over here, we see the no price modifier. But this price is actually modified by the stance of the empire and certain diplomatic options like complement and warning. If we hover over complement, we can see a breakdown of what it exactly does. Um, within 10 turns, the options for positive options, uh, so to speak, are becoming much cheaper and warning does exactly the opposites of that so declaring war costs less uh, influence points once you have sent a warning to a targeted empire again do try to hover over it and read it for yourself so that you can see exactly what it does other than this we cannot see too much we are at court war with each other and we can't make peace We cannot offer these nations or these nations anything. But if we were to go to another empire that we are not uh, in a cold war with, we could see different diplomatic options. If I were to go to Kavad, and I would open the diplomatic uh, screen here, we see a lot more options. These options are also tied to technology. Um, f check your technologies to make sure which diplomatic options you have access to. Anyway, engaging in diplomacy can be very useful once you want to trade in, let's say, strategic resources. For instance, I need um, weapons for my army, but I do not have access to titanium. I would go to the Empire Overview. I would go to a certain nation. And I would see what kind of resources they are actually producing. Over he here we see that the na this nation produces titanium. And I, accident I, I do have a demand for titanium, let's say. I would click on titanium. And this would show how happy the targeted empire would be with the trade of this, um, uh, these goods. Now again, with the complement, we would have a major discount... In diplomatic options but right now we haven't done that uh, prior to this so we can't actually do that now we can come to a commercial agreement this is trade we can exchange maps we can we can share each other's uh, science and so on and so on the uh, also the commercial agreement and the re research agreement the map exchange all automatically done once you're allied so you do get benefits from that as well Anyway, um, let's say I am only interested in trading. I, will, I were to offer my dust in return. And this will make the contract terms far more favorable for us. Um, but, you know, I want, I want to contribute a lot less so that the slider uh, comes to a break-even point. This is generally what you would want. And we can send the offer and they would accept right away. Also, you might want to know what kind of stance, what kind of attitude certain empires have towards you and what their reasoning is for that. To see that, we hover to the thing over here and it says that we are being pitied for the moment because they have a higher global score. This does not tell you that much though as the AI tends to cheat, especially on high difficulties, just so you know. But this also shows you a breakdown of what happens when you are at peace. And this is very interesting to look at once in a while. Also, uh, this diplomatic view is very useful if you are to uh, expand into a certain nation's territory. If we go to Im Empire Information, we see the certain bonuses that a nation gets. For instance, Holy Resource. We know now that they get certain bonuses for certain things, so that we can plan accordingly. Now, if a certain fa uh, faction is benefited by a certain resource, you might want to you might want to take that resource away from them and cripple them as much as possible, or you might want to 
uh, get into diplomacy, get get each other strong and fight your common enemies and then um, duke it out later on. Also, the current treaties that you have are also shown over here. Uh, currently, we only have one. Both empires can connect trade routes to, together to one another. This is done by building buildings in your cities, but we do not have access to that at the moment. Now, sometimes you get offers from other empires, and once you dismiss them, they will show over here. But at the beginning of the turn, you will get all the diplomatic uh, engagement from other factions. Right here, for example, is a peace treaty. They want peace in return for that. They will give us a lot of dust. It is what the AI generally does when they feel threatened. Uh, right now, I have an army parked at their capital city. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of self-explanatory why they would want this. But obviously, we do not go for the peace route here because we have the uh, upper hand. Now, let's say we want to declare war on this empire. We will do this... We can do this through the Diplomacy screen, go to the nation, and choose for the Declaration of War. It is going to be as expensive as it is, and we don't have modifiers. If we were to send them a warning and wait five turns, they would get a chance to, to prepare for the war, though. So you might sometimes want to uh, think it out as a surprise, just park to that capital city, and click on that city with your army, as you would do with uh, other targets. Now, there's two options you can go for. Attack and Siege. Siege, um, as it says right here, it reduces the production and the fortification of an enemy city. Uh, you, you do get a bunch of uh, experience for a hero in said army. Uh, but you do not necessarily have an, an hero, uh, assigned, a hero assigned. You can do it without a hero. The more enemies or the more armies you have surrounding the city, the faster the siege goes or the faster the defense declines, that is, of course. But if we were to do this, then the war declaration needed uh, pops up and we choose declare war. Now, our stance has changed to war and these guys are pitying us. But don't, don't be fooled. Sometimes their stances are not really legitimized and they... They do not know why they think this low of you. You can sometimes think, well, it's worth it to attack. And you would be absolutely right. We have the favor here. We have the upper hand. Anyway, that covers diplomacy for the most part. Uh, if you thought this was helpful, please make sure to share this video, like it. And I will see you guys soon. Have a good one. Cheers.